So the first step is that I let him explore the bath, smell it, <laughs> and decide for himself, okay, this thing is not going to eat me. Especially if you have a uh, sensitive skeptical type of horse. Yeah. You want to really take that fact into, co into consideration uh, that any unknown object that approaches a horse is going to be perceived as a threat. So you want to really make sure your horse can follow you and smell and touch the pad. And there, yes, good guy. Put this attention on the pad. Not sneak it on and kind of block your horse's view, sneak it on so your horse doesn't notice. And then at one point the horse gets really scared. So, oh, what, what, oh my God, what is that on my back? Huh? Yes. Huh? You're a good boy. Okay. See if I can rub him with it. Turn it on. Take it off a few times. There, I checked it out. So, because I want him to engage, to really know what's going on, when he checks it out and looks at me, I take it off and walk away. Good boy. Yeah. Good guy. Huh? Okay. There we go. There he shakes that. Yeah. Yes. So in everything I do, I'm looking to create the connection that the horse is meant to live with me. Now when he looked out the window there, uh, he was not with me mentally. He was not with me what I was doing. So I call his name to draw his attention. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, it smells horse, huh? That cinch. Yeah. Yes, good boy. Good guy. Yes, there is coming back. Good boy. Yes. Yeah. So he's a horse, he moves a lot. <laughs> he's quite sensitive, he's easily distracted. He's a very sweet horse, but he moves a lot. He's very sensitive, so I have to take that into consideration. And with horses like him, it's even more important to make sure with every step we do, we have the horse mentally with us and relaxed. Good boy. Yeah. Because only if the horse mentally with us and is relaxed, can that horse stand still. If we tell this horse, stand still, I told you stand still, this horse will for sure not want to stand still because he gets scared. You oh boy. Make sure let him check it out. Good guy. So don't be fooled by a horse that's standing still and not moving when you see him for the first time. Uh, chances are very high that the horse is just frozen. And then when you start to want to move the horse forward, this is then when things start to fly around your ears. So always make sure you do this slowly step by step and you have a horse engaged in the process. So what you should not do right after cinching up your horse is send him forward. <laughs> if you do that, <laughs> you kind of, yeah, have very high chances your horse will bark. So the first thing you want to do is just let your horse feel, think. And then the second thing is move your horse's hindquarters. And here you want to see that your horse can cross the feet three times in a row. And if your horse cannot cross the feet, you know your horse is tight and is actually ready to bark. Because a horse that's tight or nervous or excited will not want to cross the hind legs because that means that he's 
engine to run off is uh, how to say uh, disabled. Good. You want to be able to disengage the horse with nice fluid even steps. Good boy. And when you did that both directions, you can cinch up a little more. And watch his breathing. When he breathes out, I tighten the cinch. In, out. Very smooth motion. Huh? And again, disengage. One, two, three, four, five. Very good. I get more than I need. Lick and chew. Very good boy. Yes. Huh? Good boy. You're a good guy. <laughs>